Another important component of the capacity management process is the capacity database. The capacity database is also known as a CDB. The capacity database is very important in that it stores utilization data for monitored CIs. CDB is the acronym for capacity database. Let's talk about the roles of the capacity manager. The roles are manage the capacity management process, develop the capacity management plan, ensure capacity plan maintenance, and ensure that the capacity database is updated. Some of the problems in capacity management are unrealistic customer expectations, lack of appropriate information, and implementation in distributed environments. Let's talk about the costs of capacity management. Some of the costs are project management costs, personnel, training and support costs, and the capacity database. Now we're done with capacity management, let's have a little recap. We talked about the goal of capacity management, which is making sure that the required infrastructure capacity is installed, but we absolutely need to make sure that the IT capacity is always cost justifiable. One of the benefits of capacity management is increased efficiency and cost savings, reduced risk, and more confident forecast. What are the manager's duties? He needs to ensure that the appropriate data is getting into the CDB, make sure that all the capacity data has been monitored. He also needs to make sure that there is a capacity plan, so he needs to come up with a capacity plan and make sure that the capacity plan is implemented. Depending on the service level requirements, he needs to either increase or decrease capacity in the infrastructure. Also, the manager needs to report performance against the SLAs and plan for future demands. We also talked about tuning. Well, the manager's role also involves tuning and changes for optimization. These are different roles of the manager. The inputs to this process of capacity management are technology, SLAs, SLRs, the service catalog, business plans, incidents, problems, service reviews, SLA breaches. There are all sorts of things that could be inputs to the capacity management process. And lastly, the outputs of the capacity management process are, most importantly, the capacity plan and the capacity database, as well as baselines, thresholds and alarms, capacity reports, proactive changes and service improvements, as well as audit reports. In the next module, we'll be talking about IT Service Continuity Management IT Service Continuity Management is all about identifying the cause of unexpected events and minimizing their impact. The activities are plan and manage the availability of IT services according to agreed SLAs and initiate changes to the infrastructure to prevent availability failure. What is the life cycle in this process? The life cycle is initiation, requirements and strategy, implementation, and operational management. The initiation stage is where the whole life cycle begins. The initiation stage results in documentation that is used in subsequent stages. In the requirements and strategy phase, the BIA which is the business impact analysis and risk assessment are conducted identifying services that are critical to the business. Also, risk reduction methods are determined and it's also decided upon which recovery options are best suited for the organization. There are several recovery options. Options on how to recover in the event of a disaster. Recovery options are do nothing, 
put a manual system into play, reciprocal arrangement, gradual recovery, warm start and hot start. Let's talk about the recovery options. Do nothing. Well, very few businesses can actually do nothing in the event of a disaster. Worst case scenario is just wait it out till all the services are restored. The next is manual system. For businesses that don't have such a huge number of IT critical services, a manual workaround might be a more feasible solution. Reciprocal arrangement. This option involves forming an arrangement with another company with technology that's similar to your organization. Probably in the event of a disaster, if you're all stockbrokers and you need to trade, or maybe there's a trading floor somewhere else with all the IT infrastructure, maybe we could have a reciprocal arrangement. I once worked in an organization where we had a reciprocal arrangement with another organization so that in the event of a disaster, everyone would just move over. Everyone who was involved in trading would move over to the other location and just continue business like nothing happened. That's a reciprocal arrangement. Gradual recovery. Gradual recovery is an option that's often chosen by organizations that don't need to use the business processes that are supported by IT. So probably for 72 hours, they don't need IT services. That's a gradual recovery. Now, a warm start refers to recovery that's needed within 24 to 72 hours. And a hot start is almost immediate. It's needed right now. We can't afford to have IT services down. We must have a hot start and get things up and running immediately. Those are the different recovery options under the requirements and strategy stage. Now, in the implementation stage, a key activity of this stage is the development of the implementation plan and the emergency response plan, as well as the damage assessment plan and salvage plan. What are we going to salvage from this disaster? What is the damage that has been done and how are we going to bounce back afterwards? All these documents are worked on in the implementation stage. Lastly we have the operational management stage. The operational stage is really straightforward. It's all about operations, managing the plan. It might involve monitoring and controlling of the plan, making sure that the operations are going as planned, and this will actually entail lots of training, it will entail manpower, and also it will entail testing. The recovery plan is a key output of IT service continuity management. The components of a service plan include the strategy. This explains what systems, what infrastructure or facilities will be recovered and it also defines the amount of time that should be taken to recover and when the recovery should be completed. The next part of the plan is invocation. This element lists all the personnel who are authorized to invoke the recovery plan. But the recovery plan must be invoked in the event of a disaster. So who has